Friends, buddies, pals, how you doing? Welcome back to another video. Well, it's Friday. It's time for a Friday filler. This week, I'm gonna tell you all about the new blackout rod from Orvis. This is a new blackout rod from Orvis, okay? So I actually got hold of this the end of last summer before it came out and I managed to have a play with it. You would have seen me using this in the last South Island Diaries if you watched that. Yeah, fish just a fair bit during that trip and I've given this a good nudge and I just thought, seeing as it's just come out, I think the end of last month it just came out, you might wanna know what I thought about it. First off, I've got my trusty internet device here. I've downloaded the specs. So there's three models. There's a five weight, there's an eight weight, and there's a three weight Euronymphing rod. Well, I'll never use a Euronymphing rod because I don't like Euronymphing. Uh, the eight weight, I don't really have much use for an eight weight. So the five weight, this is what I've got, and this is what I've been using, and this is what I'm gonna talk about. Uh, this is basically what it says. Uh, super accurate. Actually says supremely accurate, but I like super, super accurate. High concept trout rod with superb long range mending abilities on both reach casts and on the water drift manipulation straight to the indicator. The reel seat is type three anodized aluminium in midnight black, made in New Hampshire, black blank. Titanium stripping guides, made in America, 25 year Orvis guarantee. All great stuff. So let's just talk through what that means in real terms. I'll start from this end and we'll go through it. So we've got this uh, midnight black kind of reel seat. I mean, there's very few reel seats I get excited about, but it, it does the job. The main thing is when this is done up tight, this screw bit doesn't come undone and loosen off. So therefore your reel doesn't drop off. So that, that's always a bonus. The cork is, it's nice, good quality cork, nice and comfortable in the hand. You have this very simple gray silvery writing on the kind of matte black blank. Now I like, I like the matte black blank. Oh, it's hard to say. The matte black blank. Say that 10 times really fast after a beer. But yeah, I, li I like the subtle black, non-flashy kind of look. It's really cool. Now this is a nine foot five five weight. So you've got that extra five inches than, than usual on most fly rods. As I'm sure you'll know, that extra five inches can make a big difference. Really, stop it. As you put the rod together, You've got the cool little white dots, which is pretty standard on most high-end rods these days, and that's just genius. It makes putting the rod together just so much quicker, simpler, and you don't have to spend ages lining up those guides by uh, by sight. So that's pretty cool. The, you've got the matte black stripping guide, and then the snake guides as well. They look like they're titanium, and all nicely finished, as you'd expect on a high-end rod, right the way to the tip ring, which looks very nice too. I don't know, I don't, I don't know stuff. But all in all, it's a nice looking rod. It's super light. It balances out with a Mirage LT size two reel really nicely. Speaking of which, I've been running this burnt orange Mirage LT that I've got, because it looks sick. And it balances just, just beautifully. Too easy. Just beautifully balanced. Nine foot five rather than nine foot, which is pretty standard for most fly rods. And when I first got it, I wasn't sure if I would like the extra length. No jokes, please. I'm just so used to nine foot rods. I thought potentially my accuracy might be out with the extra length because I'm not used to it. But um, that wasn't the case at all. If you're a relatively good caster, uh, this thing is so accurate. It's crazy. It surprised me actually. Bang on. Got him. If you have some degree of competency and you can cast fairly accurately, this thing will definitely up your game. It was just so easy to put the fly where you want it, it kind of made me giggle. It was just so much fun to use. Now, like I say, this won't cast for you. You've got to get out there and practice and you've got to fish and you've got to put the time in, but this definitely won't hurt your accuracy at all. So I found where that extra length really comes in handy is, is when you're picking up line off the water and then during your drift when you need to mend line, do those nice big mends and pick up line and move it around, that extra little bit of length makes so much difference. I was surprised how much better this rod is for that kind of stuff. I like it, I like it a lot, it's good. In the top section of the rod, it's really nice and soft. It's kind of very important in New Zealand fisheries because a lot of the time you're, you're fishing quite short range to a fish and you have a long leader and then not much fly line outside of the rod tip to cast that long leader with. So you actually need a soft action in that top part of the rod just to be able to load the rod and actually get some kind of line speed, get the flies to turn over and get them where you want them. I was really happy with that. That top section of the rod 
uh, is actually nice and soft and it makes that kind of fishing really really easy but then once you come down to the lower half of the rod it has got so much power it's crazy I've caught a couple of really big fish on this rod now and it had so much power it handled them really really well I was I was really surprised and impressed surprisingly impressed so if you're gonna be fishing to big fish you can, you can definitely do that with confidence with this rod um, it, it will handle the jandal for sure like I say I've been pairing the burnt orange reel with this rod and it, I know it looks so cool every time I set it up it just makes me feel kind of giddy I love it I know it has nothing to do with performance but I feel like if you're gonna drop coin on gear and it's not cheap as well as expecting it to perform well you want it to look good too the line I've been using with this rod has been the scientific anglers infinity smooth in a five weight and it seems to work perfectly it's such a nice setup it's a good all-round line you know it deals with presentation scenarios really well and then we need a little bit more power if you're turning over you know nymphs or indicators or punching into a bit of wind it seems to balance out this outfit really well but obviously that's all personal and uh, that's something you'd need to mess around with yourself come to your own conclusions i believe and i could be wrong i could be making this up but i believe it's the same blank as the helios 3 rods i'm pretty sure when i was talking to all this i think i remember saying it feels a lot like a helios 3 rod and they laughed at me because it's the same blank. I think it's just under a thousand US dollars, like 900 and something US dollars. So it's definitely up there. It's a high end rod, it's pricey, but it is a really nice rod. I'd say it's not something that you would wanna be looking at if you are just getting into fly fishing or you've only been fishing for a year or two, obviously unless you're loaded. You, you know, if you're looking to really, you know, get yourself a, a specialty rod or you just wanna go up into that high end bracket, this is definitely worth looking at. I'd definitely throw it in the mix and try it out uh, against a couple of other high end rods and, and see how it compares. If you can go to a local tackle shop and you can pick it up and you can either demo it and go fishing with it or you can take it out on the grass or casting pond and actually cast it that's the way to go and if you can do that against a couple of other brands as well then you get some kind of comparison and obviously it's not going to suit everyone's fishing style you know a rod that I might like you might not and a rod that you love I might not like so you know you've also got to think about where you're going to be fishing and what kind of fishing you're going to be doing if you're fishing a small tight overgrown mountain stream you definitely don't need this rod you don't need a nine foot five rod for a river like that you'd be better off with like an eight foot six four weight or three weight or something whatever i don't think it's available in new zealand yet but i'm pretty sure if you did want one you could order one in from killwell sports in the us i know they rolled it out at the end of last month so that's the end of july so it should be pretty much everywhere in the states i would imagine all right that's about all i got it's a great rod, I love it, and there's certain situations and certain rivers where I will definitely be using that. And then other rivers and other situations where it just doesn't really fit the bill. I hope it was helpful. I hope it filled five, ten minutes of your day and wasn't too boring. I'm gonna go home, I'm gonna edit this, I'm gonna post it, and then you can watch it. So I've got one more fishing video in the in the backlog that I'm gonna drop next week, and then after that, if we don't come out of lockdown, I'm open to ideas. So if you've got anything you want me to make a video on, drop it in the comment section below, and I'll see if I can come up with a way of making it for you. Give me a thumbs up, drop that comment in the comment section below. If you haven't subscribed, Hit the button, join the team, help me grow the channel. Have a great weekend, everybody. I'll see you on Tuesday, and we'll go fishing in the past. Peace.